This is TK Coleman, and you're tuning in to another episode of TK's Two Cents. Today, we're going to riff on being persuasive and creating more freedom. Let's dive right in with the first tweet. A powerful public speaking tip. Genuinely like the people you're talking to. You'll be amazed at how far it can take you when you address your audience with an attitude that says, I respect your potential. I'm rooting for your success and I want to see you win. What is it that makes a great communicator? Is it the ability to tell riveting, compelling stories? Is it the ability to invoke unconventional metaphors and analogies? Is it the ability to cite and quote texts on command? Or perhaps the ability to inject humor into any situation with the timing and brilliance of a stand-up comedian? I don't really know. You'll have to ask the experts about that. But I'll tell you what has worked for me in my work in education for the past several years, and it is this. When you want to reach hearts and minds, try liking the people that you're talking to. There is a powerful quote by John Maxwell that says, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Compassion, empathy, support, love. This is the bridge across which understandings can be conveyed. When you're in your head thinking to yourself, well, does the audience like me? Do they think I'm articulate? Do they think I'm interesting? Do they think I'm compelling? You're making it all about you. And the people that you talk to are interested in themselves. They're interested in their own story, their own struggles, their own well-being, their own goals. They're interested in themselves. And when you communicate with them, nothing resonates quite like being interested in them too. So many times we might focus on our own performance or we might focus on the joy, the ego satisfaction that comes from slam dunking on people by owning them, showing them how wrong they are and so forth. But as Simon Sinek says, start with why. What's the why? When you're standing up in front of the audience, what's the why? Is it to feel good about how awesome you are? Is it to get everyone to like you and to think that you're brilliant? Or are you there because you really want people to win? You are on the side of them having a better life. You want them to create more freedom. You want them to overcome the self-defeating thoughts that are holding them back from actualizing their potential. When you speak with that kind of conviction, you will always reach people. And if you can't speak with that kind of conviction, well, maybe an opportunity to question why you're in it in the first place. I once heard Zig Ziglar talk about sales. And he says there are some young salespeople who they, they, they get really nervous and they feel really guilty about selling a product because they think to themselves, well, I don't want to take people's money for this product. And Zig Ziglar says, well, wait a minute. If you're looking at that as taking people's money, you're, you're doing it completely wrong. Sales is about creating value for other people. It's about offering them something that's going to make their lives better. And if you are feeling guilty about taking people's money for your service or product, then that means you either need to get out of the sales business or you need to find something that you actually believe in. And I say the same thing about communication, broadly speaking. If you are talking to an audience about something and you're in your head about your own performance and how much they like you, or you're focused on slam dunking on the audience, then get out of the public speaking communication business altogether or find something that you actually believe in and speak on those things because you will only be effective when you speak on the things that you actually believe in and you're advocating for those things because you genuinely believe it will make other people better if they extract meaning and value from what it is you're saying. So you want to be a great communicator? Even if you're not the best public speaker in the world, even if you're not the best storyteller in the world, even if you don't have the best, best jokes in the world, if the people you're talking to can sense that you are fighting for their possibilities and that you want them to win, you will never lack an audience. At least that's the way I see it. Let's move to tweet number two. Stop waiting for that day when you'll magically get five hours to do the thing you deeply desire to do. 
Take the five minutes you have today and tell your passion no amount of time is too small to spend with you. You get more freedom by capitalizing on the freedom you already have. I'm going to use a dating analogy here. I want you to imagine there's someone that you're interested in. They have no idea who you are. You've never spent any time with them. And you walk up to them and literally in your first interaction, you drop on bended knee and you say, will you marry me? Stalker much? Slow down. Slow down. You might want to ask their name first. You might want to start with some small talk first. You might want to work your way up to perhaps asking them out for a cup of coffee first. You start small and through small incremental investments, you work your way up to the bigger ask. What's true of dating is also true of dreams. So many times we have these dreams and we immediately get on bended knee and say to our dreams, will you marry me? And when our dream says, uh, I'm not sure, I'm not really sure if I'm attracted to you. I'm not sure if you're invested. I'm not sure if you're committed to me. I'm not sure if I want to commit to you. And when we get that response from our dreams, we say, well, I guess I'm not cut out for this. But maybe, just maybe, you're going after things in a way that is too dramatic, that is too strong. If you are living a life where you've got something that you want to accomplish, but your present circumstances and conditions seem to make it difficult for you to get there, don't put the pressure on yourself to have hours and hours and weeks and weeks to be able to do the thing that you love. Look for the opportunities that you can capitalize on right now. If you want to be a writer, you want to learn an instrument, you want to start a business, but you're also working full time at another job. Well, you know what? You don't have a sabbatical that you can take and just go all in. But you do have five minutes that you can find somewhere. You've got 15 minutes that you can find somewhere. Seize that as the opportunity and make investments in that. And over time, you'll begin to reap rewards from those small investments that will make it easier for you to find opportunity for bigger investments. You know, when it comes to money and financial investing, you wanna know one of the main things that keeps people from starting the investment game? It's that they feel they don't have enough money and they only think investing matters when they're able to put in large chunks. They don't understand the power of compound interest. They don't understand the power of starting small. But the best way to create wealth isn't to wait until you have a whole lot of money to invest. It's to start right now with the little bit that you have and begin to start those powerful habits of investing and tap into the power of compound interest over time. It's the same way with your dreams. Make the small investments. That's how you get the opportunity to reap the big rewards. Don't wait. You got something you want to do? Don't wait. Don't wait for a better day. Don't wait for a better week. Don't wait for the people on your team to be like, hey, we can see your heart and we know that you need this and we're going to give you time for this. No, look for the time that you have with the life that you have and begin to make whatever room you can for the things that make you come alive. And if you do that, you'll eventually get more. All right, that's TK's two cents on how to be more persuasive and how to create more freedom. Thanks for tuning in. If you're listening via podcast, please be sure to subscribe. Also leave a review or a comment. If you're watching on YouTube, please be sure to smash that like button. Leave a comment letting me know if you have any additional thoughts or questions, topics you'd like to hear me talk about in the future. Don't hesitate to share this with a family member or a friend that you think might benefit from these riffs. And lastly, I feel no entitlement to an audience. I'm very grateful for anyone that takes the time to give me their attention. So I appreciate it. I'm grateful. Thanks for tuning in to TK's Two Cents. Keep creating the results that matter most to you. Peace.